Uh, the interesting part about this area we're visiting is that first the Americans took it from the Germans, and then the Soviets came and they took over. Yeah. So we just met up with some fellow metal detectorists. Look what they pulled out of their bag. Good morning. Unfortunately, we do not have the weather gods on our side today, but we're gonna make the most of it anyway. Welcome to a rainy day on the Eastern Front of the Second World War. Made a long drive again. This time we're going to explore some new areas and some old ones. First off, a very neat Wehrmacht base right along the edge of these fields here. So we're gonna get out our metal detectors, see if we can discover some Wolterdu artifacts, and we will make sure to share that with you. And uh, yeah, see what the first finds. Wish us luck. Yeah, it's still raining and we're working hard here and I'm actually on my first signal right next to this forest road. The Wehrmacht campsite that we're visiting was actually situated right here and my very first signal actually is a coin. This seems to be a German Tempfennig coin. I think it's in a quite nice condition still. I can probably give you a close-up of that. Here's the eagle, the swastika. 1940 it says. Tempfennig. Very clear. 72 signal right there. It is a 9mm round. And I actually already found some rifle rounds here as well. So maybe there was some action here as well in the war. I mean it is a campsite but my buddy Rob over here just said that he spotted some foxholes. So maybe finding one on here as well. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I never really found a lot of rings while metal detecting, but last trip I did. And right now, it seems like I found yet another ring. And I must say, it's a bit small. But I already called Faye over and she ensured me that this is a ring. Maybe a woman's version, small model. Always nice to find jewelry, especially if it's related to soldiers or their loved ones from the Second World War period. That's the kind of relics that we like most. Well, I'm just finishing up the filming of the ring that I just found and Faye comes walking over, points out this glass iron object. We are not sure what it is, but as you can see here, I don't know, maybe this is from uh, either, maybe it's a scope from a sniper rifle or, or binoculars, I'm not sure actually. It's intriguing. Maybe the rest is still there. Right, I'm just being called over the radio by Rob that he found a Reichsarbeitsdienst porcelain dump and Faye is still with me, so I'm gonna color over real soon as well. As you can see, I nicely filled up the hole again where I just found that ring. And right next to it, my very next signal is something interesting as well. You can see it right over here. I seem to have found some sort of holy pendant. Look at it, it says Jesus. There's a holy image right there. There was some sort of ring on top to attach it maybe to a chain, a bracelet of some sort. Maybe a soldier carried this from home, it was a personal item for him. This holy pendant actually has Polish writing on it. Maybe it originates from a Polish soldier that enlisted in the Wehrmacht. Right now, I'm making my way over to Rob, because he told me right next to the car, he found a Reichsarbeitsdienst porcelain dump. And there you can see my car. And um, now we just gotta find Rob. Rob, back there. That's where the dump is. Sometimes we just happen to park right at the hotspots. We are exploring a new camp today, a new Wehrmacht campsite, specifically the Reichsarbeitsdienst was stationed here for many years. So I already found that ring, that pendant, and apparently there's porcelain here as well. Oh wow, that is a lot. Nice finds to discover here. There we go, Reichsarbeitsdienst 1939. That's awesome. We're using the probing stick as well to hear if there's more porcelain or glass in the soil. There's bottles here as well. Wow, this one says 1941, guys. Wow, well, that's spot on research again. Can't complain, good start of the trip. There's more porcelain right here. That's great. Well, there must be more. So here's just a nice close up. Got many calendar years. There's 1938 here, 1939. 
We got a piece here from 1937. Ooh, I really like these mugs. Just gotta find myself a complete one, I guess. The guys are uh, usually doing a great job at that, so maybe they can help me out. I think we're onto something interesting again. As you can see, still not far away from my car. Uh, I think I stumbled into another dump site right here. There's a lot of glass and iron sounds. And look at what I just pulled out. I was already brushing this up a little bit, but I really think that I found a license plate here, guys. And you can still see some of the original paint. I really hope we can make this readable. But this can be a license plate maybe from a motorcycle or something from the Wehrmacht. That's really interesting. Faye came over to help me with the brush. Let's see if you can make that writing more readable. There's definitely writing there. I think there's some of the original paint. This is a genuine Wehrmacht motorcycle license plate. I used an oxalic acid solution to clear away the rust and restore the original paint. The markings are readable again. This plate has the following serial number. IS I64621. Running over to Bob right now, because he shouted that he found a Soviet magazine. And it seems like they are working in a dump site right there. You found it in the dump, or? Yeah, yes. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, Soviet PPHH? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I haven't seen that up close so far. And that's coming from the already porcelain dump. So it's all mixed up here. There's Soviet finds. There's German finds, that's really interesting. All the way down there from the dump pit where Rob just found that PBSH magazine, he shouted that he just found an American coffee ration bag. And there you can see soluble coffee product made in the USA. So uh, the interesting part about this area we're visiting is that first the Americans took it from the Germans and then the Soviets came and they took over. So history is all mixed up here, as you can see. There, Nescafe coffee. Because we're finding Soviet, American and German relics here. This place is awesome. Right, so we're currently in the process of moving our stuff. Bob just came walking along. Um, also holding some relics in his hands. And it's a part of a bayonet. You can still see the spiky part right here. And he tells me this is a Soviet field mark. Interesting. Not too bad of a condition. Nice find. Also Soviet stuff here, quite a lot. That's, that's, that's really interesting. Rob is building up the tension because he points out that all the way down there in that dugout could be a complete plate. Let me just get you down there. And there we go, two meters down. There in the middle of the screen. You can still hear me from up here. There is a plate and we hope it's complete. There is movement there and Rob believes it is a complete plate. There we go, down there. It seems to be complete, I agree, I agree. We should pull it out. Okay, so it is complete. The most interesting part is the back side, don't you agree? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh it is. It's wow. a Alexander plate, 1941. <laughs> wow. <laughs> An unbroken one, we don't have to glue this one, that's nice. A soup bowl, or soup plate. Well, apparently the guys also pulled out this complete bag. Look at it. I'm not sure that is a German, maybe it's a German backpack or some pouch of some sort, that's for sure. Maybe somebody can tell me exactly what it is. Maybe they had some maps in here, like tactical maps, binocular case, something like that. Maybe this was on a horse, on the side of a horse. You can tell me, I'm not an expert at these uh, leather pouches, but they are cool. Good morning, second day of this adventure. The weather finally cleared up, back at the World War II campsite. It's gonna be a beautiful day. So we just met up with some fellow metal detectorists and they were already digging here for quite some hours and we just had a really nice talk with them and look what they pulled out of their bag. 
that's crazy. We just we just arrived and this is a great sign I think. They're also detecting this beautiful forest over here and this is a, a, a cap eagle in German. It's a Schiedemütze Adler. So this was placed on a, on a soldier's cap. And it's complete, there's the two pins still in the back as well. Now I'm getting nervous, I need to get out my metal detector and start detecting as well. <laughs> This time it's Bob, who called me over and shouted silver! <laughs> oh, look oh. at that! Silver pocket watch. I really wonder if the, uh, the front plate is, is, is the front plate still there? Can't. Yeah, I'm gonna clean it up later. But I have a fine brush for you, let's do this live on camera. But that's, that's a really nice patina, that's really great. Yeah, really wondering what that's oh. gonna look like. I think the, the, the clock plate is still there. Yeah, it is, but is it still there? There? it's still there, yeah. but... Oh, it is oh, there! Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's, that's great, man. Okay, guys, we're just here for two oh, minutes. Wow. The weather got better. And this is our very first find. Is that actually English writing or is that Soviet? Is it Soviet yeah, I think find? it's German. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So Bob just came over to help me out determine what I just found. There, it's it's definitely a weapon part. We're just not really sure what kind of weapon. I think this is where the round went in. The trigger is somewhere over here or here, probably. So here's a small update. We decided to put down our metal detectors for a second, and I'll help out with this major dump site. Well, it was actually Rob who started digging a dump pit here, and as you can see, it's almost. It's, let's say it's half his body length, so it's getting quite deep and we're still not at the bottom yet. And as you can see, Bob and Faye are working on their own excavation right there. And let me just walk you around here. This ditch continues up there. And that is where I started my excavation at the end of this uh, dump site. And as you can see here, there's all sorts of white ashes here, burnt layers, porcelain bits everywhere here. And I just pulled out a German canteen bottle cap. Very recognizable. Really curious what I'm gonna find more down there. I was just probing around with a stick here because I'm at the outer end of the dugout and the soil is becoming quite hard here. So the guys were telling me, maybe you should quit here and start digging some over there. But I said, I've done too much effort to already give up. And one second later, look what I find. It's a belt buckle, guys. It, okay, it's made from iron, so it's not in the best condition. But this is a belt buckle from the Wehrmacht. The backside doesn't look that bad. We, we're probably going to be able to make out what kind of belt buckle this is. But that's always an amazing find. Let's, let's hope the eagle is still visible. <laughs> let's see if we can clean this uh, beauty up. All right, let's first brush it up with a soft plastic brush. These iron buckles, usually, they can be difficult to recognize. I think it's a regular God meet uns hair belt buckle. It turned out to be a World War I Imperial Army German belt buckle. A rare and unexpected find. You can just make out the crown that used to be on the front plate of the buckle. Let me just take you into my quarry over here. Um, so the next interesting find to pop up is this aluminum, or well, let's say a clothing hook. Maybe it's from the barracks of this camp. But I started brushing this up. You see the writing over there, Gau 15? I think there's, I think there's gonna be more writing there. I'm gonna brush this up. <laughs> That's really awesome, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that there would be so much writing on it. And there's more writing there. Just brush off all of this rust as best as I can. Okay, here it says GAU 15. I think that means Area 15. Here it says something like ISD 38, 1938. And here you can see, it's a bit hard to read, but you see there RAD, Reichsarbeitsdienst. <laughs> I didn't know that the Reichsarbeitsdienst also marked their, their clothing hook. So this was probably placed on one of the barracks, on one of the barrack walls. And uh, yeah, the RED men could hang their coats on this. Really cool, love those markings. 
Rob's excavation site is just getting deeper and deeper and he's really making us exciting because he's telling us that there's multiple complete porcelain objects down there. <laughs> well, it's not broken. That's already quite, a, quite some prestige right there to pull something like that out of the hole without breaking it. Aye. Oh, no, 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 no stamp. No stamp. That's a shame. It's still a nice porcelain dish. Right, so I decided to grab my detector uh, and check all of the excavated sand to make sure we didn't miss on any nice high pitch signals like metals, coins, you name it. And look at this, this artifact just popped up. And well, Faye actually found one of these numbers before and that's why I know that this tag was used to label beer kegs or beer barrels, however you want to call it. So these soldiers definitely drank some beer here. And I don't blame him, I do the same. So here's just a short wrap up of what came out of this beautiful dump. Um, piece of RAD porcelain, marked 1943. This really nice iron bell buckle. I'm really curious how that will turn out. This stack for beer cake. Some buttons, canteen, top cover. Um, and this beautiful clothing hook marked with RAD. Well, that's it for now. We're closing up the dump. The finds ran out. There we go, all nicely backfilled, as you should leave it. Time to pack up our stuff. Thank you all for watching, especially my patrons. If you want to enjoy bonus material, exclusive looks behind the scenes, make sure to check out my Patreon. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.